This is Matthew Kruger with Jack Courtney, here representing the intrascleral flange hap technique described by Yamane at ACRS 2016. An EC3-PAL has been injected into the anterior chamber through a clear corneal wound. This patient had prior RK, so it's a limbal incision. Here a TSK needle from Japan is being placed through the conjunctiva and the sclera at a 20 degree angle and advanced into the anterior chamber. And then with an MST 25 gauge forcep, we have a paracentesis here located about 45 degrees to the right of the main wound. The haptic is grasped with a 25 gauge forcep, and then the haptic is fed into the lumen of the 25 gauge needle. Once it's fed, it is continued to be fed so that most or about two thirds of the haptic is totally engaged in the needle, which is important because if it's not engaged, it'll be hard to externalize the needle. Once this has been uh, fully engaged in the needle, it is passed off to the assistant and then the entire lens is moved nasally away from the surgeon in order to prepare for the placement of the second haptic. Now the second haptic is a little more difficult to get in. We have a paracentesis about 45 degrees to the left, but for a right-handed surgeon, it's a little bit awkward to go through the paracentesis. And so moving the lens over such that the angle will be good to attack the trailing haptic is beneficial here. Now here, 180 degrees away, which we've marked the torque marker, we have the second 30 gauge needle, which has been bent at the hub with the bevel up and trying to optimize the position here to make sure that it's 180 degrees away uh, is critical. Otherwise, the lens will be tilted or will be miscentered within the pupil. Once this position has been decided, then the surgeon will uh, line it up and enter the sclera 20 degrees away from the limbus and five degrees in, tunneling in a few millimeters before turning the needle to enter the chamber so that the next haptic can be delivered into the needle. Here the needle is being pushed through and with these TSK needles it's actually quite sharp and rather easy to penetrate into the sclera without using much counter traction. And once you're in the needle is turned 90 degrees to place the needle into the anterior chamber. And then here using the same 25 gauge forcep the trailing haptic is grasped after pushing the lens over a little bit, it's important that it's a 90 degree or a greater angle to enter into the haptic without, or the lumen without too much trouble. Once this has been threaded a little bit, it's important to keep threading it down farther and farther such that the when the haptic is externalized, it comes out easily. If you don't do it enough, it will not come out fully or it'll be hard to get it out of the conjunctiva and need, the conjunctiva will be, needs to be dissected. Here, once the, both have been threaded, the haptics and needles are pulled through the conj and sclera equally in a synchronized fashion. And here you can see we have both of the haptics fully externalized. Then cautery can be brought over. Here, using the same forcep, the haptic will be grasped. This is a low temp cautery, which does not get red when it's depressed. And slowly you can cauterize the haptics to form the bulb or the mushroom. And with the low temp, you need to get within about one or two millimeters of the tip, although you don't touch the tip. The term threatening the haptic I've heard, and that's a good way of describing it, that you threaten the haptic and then basically make a little bulb that's maybe two or three times the width of the haptic. And then once the first haptic has been done, we move over to the second haptic, which again will be grasped and then threatened with the low temp cautery to achieve a little bulb that's maybe one, sorry, two to three times the width of the haptic, which will be pushed into the sclera. Here we just come within one or two millimeters of it and keep going until we're satisfied with the size of the bulb. Obviously making this too big or too small, you would risk either not being able to push it into the sclera or having it go into the sclera too much and that could cause a lens dislocation within the eye later on. This is our first case doing this and so we're attempting to achieve a good amount. And once that's been done, the haptics can be grasped with a tying forcep and then pushed and or grasped and led back into the same tunnel and then made flush by pushing it in and ensuring that it's flush by running the tying forcep over after pushing it into the sclera. 
period. You can still see the uh, bulb uh, coming out of the conjunctiva and the sclera as you rub over it, but if it's flush because you can rub, run the tying forcep over the area and see quite well that it's in place. Once we've satisfied with this, we'll move over to the other one and thread it in down the same track. And then once it's in, we can kind of push in uh, using the edge of the inserter or the, in this case, a tying forcep, ensuring that it's fully in. It's important to make sure that the conjunctiva is over the bulb such that the conjunctiva is not being incarcerated into the sclera. And we keep pushing it in just to be satisfied that it's going to be in the right position. And then once we think it's fully into position, we can run the tip of the tying forcep over the sclera to make sure that there is uh, no part of the tip sticking out and you can feel that it's flush giving a nice smooth surface there. We're just being extra careful as this is our first case doing this to make sure that it's in the right position. The dilation of the patient is a little off center, but overall the lens appears well centered. Uh, it appears stable and this patient will have a good result after having a dislocated IOL complex. We'll clean up by putting in sutures and removing the vitrectory equipment and placing subcontival incisions. Thank you for watching.